Hello friends, I hope you're well. This is Sanjeev Kaushik and I trade global markets for a living. A few weeks ago, I had released a video talking about my intraday option selling strategies. In that video, I briefly mentioned two technical indicators, ATR and ADX. Many of you had requested that I should create another video talking about these two indicators as well. And this is exactly what I'm going to cover in this video. But not just the ATR and ADX, I would also cover some bonus tips for you and also some of the pitfalls of using ATR and ADX under certain circumstances. Now, knowing how to use these indicators is a really good thing. But even better is to know what are the pitfalls of using these two indicators. So my sincere request to you is that you go through the entire video because towards the end, I would have the pitfalls covered for you. Without knowing those pitfalls and going into trading right away can be a little too dangerous. So without any further ado, let's get started and we'll start off with the ADX indicator first. So here in front of your screen, I have the Nifty Bank Index opened. It's a daily chart and underneath this chart is ADX indicator. Again, the charting website that I'm using is TradingView. So what you'll have to do is go on indicators and strategies and you write ADX over here and it will show you average directional index as the indicator. And you can add it. It will be added underneath the price chart of the asset that is already open in your screen. In this case, it is Bank Nifty for me. Next, what you'll have to do is you draw a horizontal line on ADX at 25 mark. Now, before I tell you the significance of this line, let me explain what exactly is an ADX indicator. It only tells us how strong the momentum is in an underlying movement. That is, it does not tell us in which direction the underlying is moving, but it tells us what is the strength in its movement, how strongly the underlying is moving in whichever direction it is going, be it up or down. So. Coming back to the significance of this line that we have over here around 25 mark, as and when ADX crosses the mark of 25, we can say that the momentum in that particular asset is really strong. So let's say the asset is going upwards and the ADX at the same time is also about 25. What it would signify is that the force of the bulls is really strong and going forward, we can expect the upward movement to continue. And the opposite is also true. That is, if the underlying is moving downwards, and we also see that ADX is above 25, and in fact is rising, then we can estimate that going forward, the downward move will continue. So this is what ADX stands for. So now, can we backtest this indicator by what we're looking at on the chart? Of course we can. So if you see this region on Bank Nifty, where Bank Nifty was pretty much trading sideways, you can see that consistently ADX was hovering under the 25 mark. And it's only recently that ADX has started to look upwards and it may cross the 25 mark. So currently the ADX reading is at 24.50 as of the session ending 27th September 2021. 24.50 signifies that if ADX went upwards from here, then we can safely assume that Bank Nifty may keep going upwards. However, if ADX just touched this 25 mark and started coming down, then I'll be much more comfortable taking some short positions on Bank Nifty because that will tell me that the upward movement in Bank Nifty does not have enough strength. And the direction of ADX also matters a lot. Right now, the direction of ADX seems to be upwards, which means the force is increasing consistently. And this is the force of the bulls. Now, what I also like to do is, I like to draw another line, but at 20 mark. So when ADX is below 20, what it tells us is that there's absolutely no trend in the underlying, which is again 
very significant. As you can see over here, bit of a back testing. For the time when ADX was under 20, Bank Nifty was pretty much moving sideways. So how does it help us as option writers? As and when ADX will come under the 25 level, I would know that the momentum is slowing down. And that's the right time for me to look to sell some intraday straddles as well as strangles because the movement on an intraday basis would be very restricted. As and when the ADX will go below 20 mark, this gives me an even higher conviction and I start selling intraday straddles and strangles even more aggressively, right? So this is the significance of ADX. Essentially what we're doing is we're doing exactly opposite to what a swing trader does. A swing trader who also knows what an ADX indicator is would never take a position on a stock or an index if its ADX is below 25 mark because that would tell the swing trader that there's absolutely no trend in that particular underlying and there's no point in taking a position be it bullish or bearish because there would be not enough swing for him to take any kind of profits. And the exact opposite is what we are going to do. We know that there won't be enough swing. There's no trend. That's why we'll feel very comfortable selling options on an intraday basis, on a weekly basis, and even on a monthly basis. So this was about ADX, but do not use this indicator in isolation. Also add in the ATR to make sure that you're taking the right positions. So let me just move on to ATR now, and I'll remove this indicator for now. So in order to add ATR, I'll go here. ATR is average true range. So I've added average true range as an indicator. Now, other thing is you can see over here, it's taking the data equivalent to last 14 sessions because this is a daily chart. It's taking last 14 day sessions into consideration when deriving the ATR value. And same was with the case with ADX. They both take last 14 sessions worth of data into consideration. Some people prefer to use 10, like you can change if you go over here, go to cogwheel and then you can change the length to 10 over here. But I usually prefer not to change it. I also don't prefer to change the smoothing because 99% of the traders usually use the default settings on the indicators. And I prefer to stay with the crowd. I prefer to see on my screen what the rest of the crowd is also seeing so that I can take my position along with them and I can close my positions along with them because technical indicators work only when a lot of people are also taking positions at the same time. So keep it 14. Now, what is ATR? It is the simplest way of finding out how volatile a stock or an index is and the magnitude of its value varies from underlying to underlying. So what do I mean by the value? If you look at the ATR right now for Bank Nifty on a daily chart, the ATR stands at 552. What it loosely translates into is that on an average in last 14 days, we have observed Bank Nifty to make a move of 552 on a daily basis. This move, mind you, is from the lowest point that was seen and the highest point that was seen in Bank Nifty. This is not the open and closed move. This is the lowest and the highest point. I do not want to bore you with the technicalities as in how the ATR is defined or calculated. If you are interested, you can go and see the mathematical calculation on the internet. It's very easy to find out these kind of calculations nowadays. But loosely, the ATR translates into volatility. As the ATR starts going higher, you would know that it's highly volatile. Can we backtest it? Of course we can. Let's take a look at these bank nifty candles over here. Look how big these candles are, right? All the way up to here. So if I highlight this region over here, you can see that the highlighted region has much bigger candle as compared to the candles that we are seeing over here between these blue lines. 
and these candles signify nothing but how volatile bank nifty was on a daily basis and needless to say if these are such big candles that have been formed the ATR would also be higher and that's exactly what we are seeing right now so if I hover my mouse over here ATR during those days were somewhere around 900 mark on a consistent basis so yes based on ATR readings from those days you could pretty much expect bank nifty to make a move of 1000 points on either side looking at the ATR observations those were extremely volatile days and as and when the volatility started going down so did the size of candles and of course so did the ATR why do I like ATR so much because if I want to find out how much any stock or any index is going to move in next say one week one month and even next day I can pretty much go and look at its implied volatility all you have to do is use the implied volatility which in turn is derived by options prices themselves and let me know guys in the comments if you want me to talk about that mathematical calculations as well I'll be more than happy to do that for you now here why am I relying so much on ATR and not doing the mathematical calculation of IV and the answer is really simple it's the simplicity that I seek and ATR is really very simple to look at I would simply look at bank nifty's ATR it's currently at 552 so I know that over the last 14 days the average move in bank nifty has been 552 now of course the question is how do we use ATR for our intraday option selling so first of all, if I'm going to sell a straddle, then I can use the ATR information to find out where is it that I should be buying my wings to convert it into an iron fly. ATR currently is at 552 mark. So what I can do is, let's say I take an at the money straddle and looking at the ATR, I'll buy my wings that are one ATR apart. In this case, I'll buy my wings which are 552 points apart on both sides to convert my straddle into an iron fly. So if I want to be a little more conservative, then I might take 0.5 ATR. That would be roughly 275 points either side. Or if I want to be much more aggressive, then I can buy my wings about 1.5 times the ATR or even two times the ATR. It's all up to me. But I know that this is the ATR and now I am choosing the width of my iron fly based on a mathematical calculation and I know with a very high conviction that this is how much the underlying has been moving on a daily basis so chances for me going wrong are very minimal if I take my wings that are 1 ATR apart right so that's how I use ATR and it's very easy it's very simple I just have to put in the indicator it will tell me a number and that's the number that I know the index is going to move on a daily basis. Yes, there would be outliers because there's nothing written and given and confirmed in these markets. The markets are extremely volatile. They have been, they always will be, right? But you know that there is some kind of a methodical approach that you're following right now. So this was about the straddle. What about the strangle? If you're an aggressive risk taker, and you can take the strangle at 1x ATR, that is 552 points apart, or maybe 600 points apart, which means if the index is trading at, let's say, 36,000, then you can sell your call at 36,600 level, and you can sell your put at 35,400 levels. So that's 600 points apart on both sides. So in a way, you've given yourself 2x ATR worth of a protection right 1x on the call side and 1x on the put side and it's all mathematical it's a methodical approach that you're following which is the name of this channel which is exactly how i like to trade that is stay methodical stay systematic stay robotic there's no place for emotions or guesswork in your trading now atr has a lots of usages it is also used for identifying the profit targets if you have taken a position and also assigning stop losses to your position so if you're trading in a stock or even just buying or selling calls or puts, then you can use ATR in many different ways. But I'm only covering ATR from an options point of view. Again, if you do want me to cover more on ATR, as in how you can use it for swing trading, 
how you can use it as a channel to identify the support and resistance levels and also how you can use ATR to find out your entry level for positional trades then let me know guys in the comments I'll be happy to create another video going much deeper into ATR so that's the meaning of ATR for us before we move on and we still have a lot to cover in this video I want to show you something that's very important with respect to ATR and that is the value of ATR as you can see right now, again, the value is 552. But if I change my asset from Bank Nifty to say SPX, which is the S&P 500, then in that case, what you can see over here is my ATR is actually 43, right? And the reason I wanted to show you ATR for S&P 500 is S&P 500 in magnitude is much smaller than Bank Nifty. Bank Nifty trades in the range of 35, 40,000. S&P 500 trades in the range of 4400 or so and therefore the ATR number has also come down. So the number is in proportion with the magnitude of any asset that you're trading. It's actually an absolute number. It's not a percentage and it's also not a range. ATR can go as high and as low as it needs to go. So it doesn't really have upper or lower bounds. It's an absolute number. And that's why I like ATR because it's so simple. Now I can look at ATR for S&P 500, which is 43, roughly translates into 1% of S&P 500. And I know that historically, this has been the average move on S&P 500, which is 1%. And that is exactly the number that I'm looking at right now. 43.66 roughly equates to 1% of S&P 500. Now, let me move back to Bank Nifty. And now is the time for us to bring in the ADX indicator as well. Okay, so we have both the indicators here and I'm going to share one bonus tip with you that relates to ATR. And the bonus tip is if any stock, any index, any ETF has moved more than three ATRs, that is three times its current ATR value, then more often than not, it is a sign that you would see some kind of a reversal. Because if any stock or index has moved three times its ATR, it means the volatility on that particular asset has been very high. And volatility is like a rubber band. It may expand for a longer duration, but after a certain period of time, it must revert back to its original position or shape or form. And that's exactly what we are betting on. So the bonus tip is, if you see a particular underlying that has moved more than three ATR values, then you can bet on its reversal. Currently, Bank Nifty's ATR is 552. If Bank Nifty moved 1500 points upward or 1500 points downwards in a few trading sessions, it may not happen in a single day, but if it happens, let's say over two, three, four, five days, then at that time, you can bet on the reversal of Bank Nifty. If it has, let's say, gone down, you can sell puts. If it has gone up, you can sell call options and expect some kind of a reversal, right? So this is a bonus tip. Let me also share with you the pitfalls of using ADX and ATR, especially using them in isolation. And the pitfall is actually right here in front of your eyes. And let me highlight that region for you. So if you look at these three elliptical regions, both on the indicators as well as on Bank Nifty, and let's say you were not looking at ATR and you were only looking at ADX. ADX at this point was much below the 25 level. In fact, it was much, much lower than 20 level as well, right? It was somewhere around 17.66. So you might have thought that ADX has come down to a very low level. And this is probably a right time for me to sell some straddles or strangles on an intraday basis or even for a weekly or say monthly position, right? That's what you would have thought only by looking at ADX. But if you would look at the ATR, ATR was really very high during the same period. And when ATR is at such a high level, this is the time when you should have avoided taking straddle or strangle position. Because ATR is nothing but a mathematical output of how volatile the particular asset is. 
and in this case its volatility is at one of the highest levels observed in past history so make sure that you're looking at both adx atr together merely looking at one of the indicators to take the position can be extremely dangerous and of course you probably already have realized another key point here that is if atr is at its highest level in last one year or so avoid taking positions that are non-directional that is strangle or straddle you're much better off in this particular stage to take a positional view and let's say in this case you would have shorted bank nifty by whichever way you feel comfortable right so if the volatility is such high then adx can be misleading so take both the indicators into consideration that brings me to the second pitfall and in order to look at the second pitfall i want to squeeze in some more observations from the past months so here what i've done is by squeezing in roughly about last 15 months worth of data points i'm trying to identify what were the highest levels of atr and what were the lowest levels of atr that were seen in last one to one and a half year so again i'll draw the highest point line here and the lowest point line here i have already shared with you the significance of highest point line here it pays to know what were the highest levels of ATRs observed in last one to one and a half year. Do not go all the way two, three, four years back. They may not serve the purpose, but at least know how volatile an asset has been in last one to one and a half year. And why am I saying that? Just to explain it, I'll bring in much more data points here. So here what I've done is I've gone all the way back from 2021 to 2010. And here you would see that the ATR is really low. And obviously it would be low because Bank Nifty during those days used to trade around 10,000, 12,000, 15,000 mark. And as I've told you, ATR is an absolute number and its magnitude depends upon the size of the asset. ATR around 250 cannot be compared with ATR of 552 that we are observing right now. And that's why I'm saying when you have to do this comparison of the recent high levels and low levels that have been observed in any asset and in this case bank nifty do not go beyond one to one and a half year because the size of the asset must have changed right so that's the point that was about the comparison with past observed values and again just to reiterate be very very careful on the atr highest levels that were observed it means the volatility is at all time high and obviously, during high volatility, we need to stay alert. What's the significance of low volatility or low ATR levels, especially when the ATR is at its lowest levels? Let me just remove ADX for a while so I can talk about this point by expanding ATR for you. So the lowest levels are somewhere here. You see, generally, low ATR obviously translates into low volatility. And low volatility sessions are always followed by high volatility sessions. And that's the significance of these bottoms that are marked over here. When ATR touches its lowest level that has been observed in last one, one and a half year. Listen to this point. This is very critical for you to know. When ATR touches its lowest point observed in last one, one and a half year, this is the time when you can expect a very wild move in the asset. And can we backtest this? Of course we can. Look at this session over here. 16th of July, 2021. I'm giving you the dates so you can also backtest by yourself. We saw Bank Nifty over here at the levels of 35,849 or so. And the lowest on the ATR was marked. Bank Nifty dropped and we saw a very big move in next two sessions itself. Again, over here, some of the lowest level were observed and look, after two, three sessions itself, we saw a very big move in Bank Nifty. And again, on 15th September 2021, very recently, the ATR was at its lowest level in last one, one and a half year and look how 
bigger move we saw in Bank Nifty going forward and ATR also jumped from there. Another lower level that we can see, can we backtest this as well, is over here. Exactly 27th August 2020. Lowest level of ATR followed by these two big candles or a jump in ATR. Even in traders community, this is a very less known usage of ATR. And that's exactly what I'm sharing over here with you. Low volatility would always be followed by high volatility days. And high volatility days would always be followed by low volatility days. Just like the example of rubber band that I took. One last point on ATR before I wrap up. When you see these high level of ATRs over here, that is some of the highest volatility that you would have seen in last one, one and a half year. These are generally accompanied by the downward move in the underlying. And let me just expand these candles. You see the upward move was seen here and the ATR went up. But ATR stayed up for a longer duration during the downward move. What it also signifies is, and think of it as a second bonus tip, the high ATR observations are usually followed by bullish moves because high ATR values, and mark this point, high ATR values often occur at market bottoms because this is a time when panic selling happens. And when we see some of these highest levels of ATR, that's the time when we should be looking to take a bullish position. I cannot say the same about the lowest ATR level because at this stage, I don't know whether the underlying is going to go up or go down. I know that the lowest ATR level has been observed and the underlying can go either way. So the opposite is not true. A high ATR would generally mean that you are going to see the lowest observations, right? And you may also see a bullish up move and you have to be ready for that so that you can benefit from it by taking the right positions. But when the low ATR values are observed, then the move can be on either side. That is the volatility would come, but I don't know whether that volatility would push the underlying upwards or the downwards. Because as you can see on 16th July 2021, the lowest ATR value was followed by the downward move, but the lowest ATR value observed in 15th September was followed by an upward move in the underlying. So this is also a key for us to remember as in the significance of ATR. So I have covered a lot of information in this video, both on ADX, ATR, selling options, taking position, identifying the right points at which you can benefit from larger move in an underlying and heaps of other information in this video. Let me know you guys if there are any other concepts that you want me to cover and I would really appreciate your feedback because that's all I need in return. As this is a mission that I'm on, I want to make everyone independent and self-sufficient to be able to trade by themselves by using methodical ways. Thank you and I'll see you soon.